It's a new week and thus a new animal, and for this video we'll be talking about the red panda, an animal that is in fact not an actual panda as you would believe. Strange I know, animal classification and naming can be pretty off sometimes. They're also my favourite animal, on an unrelated note. This video comes to you as a collab with an amazing channel called Henry the Paleo Guy. He does similar videos to us and has his own series New Zealand Bird of the Week, so we thought a collab would make sense. Make sure to check him out, link to his channel is in the description and I hope you enjoy the video. Red pandas are endemic to the temperate forests of the Himalayas and are also found from the foothills of western Nepal as well as parts of China. They are typically found between 2200 and 4800 metres in altitude with little annual change, preferring mountainous, mixed deciduous and conifer trees, especially if there are old trees in dense understories of bamboo, as the old trees provide excellent nesting areas for their young, and the bamboo provides them with a steady source of food. Being excellent climbers, red pandas usually forage in trees, mainly eating bamboo, but have also been known to eat small mammals, birds, eggs, berries and flowers. Just like the giant panda, which they are only related to by name, they cannot properly digest cellulose, so animals must consume a large volume of the plant to survive of it. Because of their lower calorie diet, they do little more than sleep and eat to ensure they don't burn up all the energy they have gained. Interestingly, red pandas can taste artificial sweeteners such as aspartame, and are currently the only non-primate animals known to be able to do so. Red pandas have a variety of adaptations to help them survive in their forested environments. For one, their long bushy tails provide balance in trees, as well as excellent camouflage against their habitat of moss and lichen-covered trees. The paws of the red panda are also short and black, with thick fur on the sole of their paws, providing thermal insulation on icy and or snow-covered surfaces. Red pandas also have adaptations as bamboo feeders, with strong sharp claws that face inward for grasping narrow tree branches, as well as leaves and fruit. Just like its relative only through name, the giant panda, red pandas also possess a false thumb, which, as an extension of the wrist bone, helps the red panda to handle bamboo and other food with greater ease. They can also rotate their ankles when descending from trees in order to control their descent, and are one of few climbing species to do so. Unfortunately, these cute animals do face many dangers throughout their lives. Red pandas can be attacked by snow leopards, dolls, and even by their closely related cousins, the mustelids. But their biggest threat, unfortunately, comes from us. The habitat of the red panda has decreased rapidly, and has also become increasingly fragmented. Pandas are also poached for their unique pelts, and are even kept as pets in some parts of India and Nepal. Red pandas have decreased to about 40% in China over the last 50 years, and the populations in western Himalayan areas are considered to be even lower, although with the animal's elusive nature and nocturnal habits, monitoring their populations and their changes has been difficult. Small groups of animals with little opportunity for genetic exchange face the risk of inbreeding, decreased genetic diversity, and even local extinction something that has already occurred in some regions. The naturally low birth rate of the animals doesn't help much either, as red pandas usually only give birth to a single baby, and while cute, they have a high death rate in the wild, which is further heightened by all the previously mentioned factors. Red pandas are classed as endangered by the IUCN, and their population of just under 10,000 is decreasing. Luckily, conservation measures are in place, and the red panda's future lies with those who care about their ongoing survival. Thank you for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you'd like to learn more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, and if you'd like to see more from us. And remember to go subscribe to Henry the Paleo Guy.